Welcome to all our viewers to this webinar, another celebration of Recruit My Mom's 10th birthday. And today I am really um, so pleased and honored to have Nicole Sachs as our guest. Nicole Sachs is the head of women in business at FNB Business. And today we are talking about women in business and impacting Africa one business at a time. The reason why this topic is so important to me is, is that I believe that by building women-owned businesses and assisting women in business, we really can make a positive impact in Africa. And I know that this is very close to Nicole's heart. So I just wanna welcome you, Nicole, and I wanna thank you for your time. So welcome, Nicole. But it's a thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I feel honored to, to be chatting to you today and um, being, being given the opportunity to talk about what we do, what I'm passionate about and how I'm living my purpose as well, which is which is great, which I get to do in my day job, um, which, which is fantastic. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. So, Nicole, just talking about your passion and what you do, why don't you kick us off and tell us about your role at FNB? and what it is you do and your why. Yeah, so, so but about, I'm probably the luckiest um, person in the bank. I've probably got the best job in the bank, but don't tell anybody else that. Um, but uh, I get to look after, well, and, and I do look after our strategy that focuses on supporting female-led businesses. So anything and everything to do with um, supporting female entrepreneurs on their growth journey, helping with educating them, empowering them, um, celebrating successes, telling stories, um, sharing those, those impactful moments that women have because we often don't do that enough. Um, and then also helping our customers have an impact within the communities within which they operate as well. And, and like I said, I get to live my passion and purpose every day because I get to, I get to help female entrepreneurs. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big bank. We've got, we've got a big client base, but um, about a quarter of our, our base is made up of female-led businesses. We've got over 240,000 women-led businesses, and that's very exciting for me um, because, I mean, that just tells us there's a lot of growth happening in, in the country. There's a lot going on with women, and women are starting to, to create jobs. Nikki, I think you, well, Nicole, I think you have got by far the most interesting sounding role. I, I think I can understand why you're so passionate about it um, to be able to do what you do. And I've seen you in action um, and part of it. So it's been really great to yeah. see. Tell me what. Yeah, I think, sorry, yeah. Philip, and I think, you know what, one of the things as well, I think it's also quite key is that even though we are a bank and a financial services provider, people just think, a bank is a bank, right? You go there for money, but but it's more than that. It's it's, it's about trying to affect social change and being a, a corporate socially responsible sort of entity as well. So we realize as well that you know, in order to help to help any business grow, we need to be part of that that community and that economy affecting that change. So so that is why we actually do what we do and why we've got this niche and this specific lens over support, supporting female businesses. Yeah, I like that. And I, I think that having been a female entrepreneur and seeing the journey of being a female entrepreneur is, is that I have valued the input. Um, and I do think that there is a special lens that is required of a woman -owned business that sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to ask you just what differences do you see between male owned businesses and female owned businesses? Yeah. So, so it's quite interesting. Um, I think one of the things, I'll, I'll give you some stats as well, but um, you know, we tend to see that women are, are actually um, are, are, less, are less riskier clients. Um, they tend to take on less debt and smaller amounts as well. Um, if we look at our base, our base in particular, 46% um, of our women actually fall into the lower risk categories. So women are risk, less risk for us. Um, as opposed to our male, male counterparts, which are 38%. Um, and in the high risk categories, women only make up 14%, whereas men make up 20% of those, those categories. So, so that's, that, is just, that makes business sense, obviously. Um, and men are more likely to take on unsecured credit, whereas women don't. Um, and then a woman tends to also pay back loans a lot quicker. 
Um, so yeah, so that's quite some of the nice data that we get to see and the, the insights that we have. And, and also when it comes to investing, women are stronger savers and investors than, than their male counterparts as well. So they say, we save for the rainy day. We save for those, those, those things that we think are probably going to happen in the, in the future. Um, and that stands us in good stead. Um, so I mean, those are some of the, the sort of the data differences that we can see and that we, we know anecdotally as well. But, but, you know, I think when it, when it comes to, to businesses and stuff as well, is that, you know, women don't tend to use their networks as well as men do. Um, typically, you know, men have sort of, sort of call on their networks, you know, they've gone to old boys sort of schools and clubs that they're part of and they, they leverage off those networks, the networks, they pick up the phone, they, you know, they, they phone a buddy when they've got a tax issue or, or a question about something. Whereas, whereas women, I like to say, we, we, we're multifaceted, we, we like diamonds, we wear many hats, so we don't necessarily get the opportunities to network as much as our male counterparts do. And, and when we do, we often feel bad about asking or phoning somebody for a favor. And I, I don't know why that is, but I'm seeing it changing, which is exciting. And you know, I think the networks of women that we've created as well, and um, I'm just seeing the interaction that's that's happening between the ladies there and the connections and the, you know, the with the business that's being done. And it's so inspiring to see. So so that is changing, which which I'm which is a really positive sign. And um, but I think those would be the sort of the main differences that we see. And I think men also take they they take big chances they take big risks um you know we like to have all our ducks in a row we like to have everything 100 percent before we take that leap of faith whereas i think men would say yeah after after if i tick one or two boxes yes i'm going to go for it and i'm going to do it <laughs> I, I i relate um, which is interesting for a bank because one wonders yeah. what you prefer we won't ask ask you to answer whether you prefer male or me female yeah, no, no, no. No, exactly, um, exactly. But but you know, also interesting, Philippa, is that you know, women. You know, we see a lot of as well as women tend to, and what I notice as well with our female clients is, women actually tend to also look after the welfare of their staff more. They want to have more of a social impact, right, and make a difference with with their staff, with their families, um, and that sort of thing. So we see a lot of 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 take up of some of our products, for example, that speak to employee benefits, and that just shows you that they caring, nurturing women is that they want to look after their staff their families and extended families and, and make a difference in the, in the community in general oh, that's good to know and and it's good to see and in, given your insights that you just mentioned on the positive social impact that most women-owned businesses have on a broader society you know what hinders their growth apart from being possibly ri more risk averse um, and then why if they have such a positive social impact why aren't they more female-owned businesses. Yeah. yeah, I think Philippa sadly, I mean, we know that uh, you know access to finance is a real, real challenge, um, and specifically for net for financial institutions, typically we look for some form of suretyship, and because of past injustices and 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 you know what what has been like past experiences that. Women haven't been in the working environment. They haven't been able to build wealth for themselves, or they haven't had um, the opportunity to work and and to sort of you know build a bit of an income or a nest egg to invest in starting a business. So so the challenges then come in on the, the obviously on the financial side. They then don't have suretyship or collateral, which a bank would typically need um, to to help fund a, a loan. Um, and and if you don't have that, then then pricing is really high, and that also that also hinders entrepreneurs because. You know, you you priced you priced on your credit history, your credit score as well, and and that sometimes has a real negative effect because you're now paying a premium for for funding that is that you know you should actually be needing to put back into your business. So so that is one of the the major major challenges, and that's and it's also consequences of the past, right? And of 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 what's what's happened not only in in Africa but but across across the the world, and um, you know, and also. One of the things is another thing is that is that access to education, and I think this is really for me a key component because what it's what you don't know you don't know, right? So if you don't have the education and the knowledge on how to start, run, and grow your business, you're not going to succeed. You you're going to to fall flat because you won't typically know what the right things are to do at the right stage of your business. So that access to education and information at the right time is so critical and so key. 
And I think that's why it's really important that that is a key driver for us. I mean, it is one of our key drivers and part of our strategy is educating more women, making sure that they that they know what they need to do to run a successful business. I mean, just the basics of, of understanding a, an income statement and a balance sheet um, um, are, are really critical sort of sort of elements. And it's and it's ma- it's making sure that that education is out there and and um, and promoted and, and shared with women. Um, I'm not. I'm going to do a shameless punt um, for the bank now, but we do. We, but I think this is quite cool. Is we, we've got actually got a learning platform called Fundaba, um, which which brings together the, the, the name Fundi and Indaba, which is learning and uh, Fundi, as you know, and Indaba gathering. And and this platform is like a mentor in your pocket. So it is a um, a a whole sort of coach or business coach, as as you would like to call it of um, masterclasses, workshops, education, written content, videos, all around that incubating, starting, running and growing your business. And that is a really nice value add for, for our clients because it just it just helps them with little things that they might not know about. I mean, just how to draft a legal agreement or whether you should open a, a sole prop or a CC. Um, I mean, something basic like, and this is one of the things I really like to promote is that running your your business and your um, personal account separately, because as as a financial institution, you we look at at your your statements, and if you're running your your personal life through your business accounts, well, you can't really define what it, what is what. So it's really important to separate those two. And a lot of people, especially women, when starting out, are, are keeping them joined, and and that that's a big hindrance for them going forward when they're looking for for credit. Yeah, I can imagine. So. Um... Nicole, do you feel um, that FNB, for instance, is pushing the boundaries in being able to assist women to access finance more easily? No, I think we, we're trying the best we can within the levels and the parameters that we have, um, Philippa. Obviously, we, we are governed by strict regulations as well and the SAB. And, you know, we still need to be a responsible lender because it's our shareholders' money. It's, it's, it's your money. And everybody names on the street money that they're investing that we're then typically lending out. Um, which I don't think a lot of people sort of understand. So, so we do we do push the boundaries as much as we can, and we're allowed to, but but still being a responsible lender. Um, and and we are actually seeing that. You know, if we look at our credit data and and that sort of thing, we are seeing a lot of loans are being a lot more loan loans are being granted to to women because of the the stats that I gave you about be, around being less you know um, like less riskier and um, and you know stronger savers so they can pay back quickly. So yeah, I think we are we are doing what we can do. Um, I still think there there's a lot personally. There's a lot more we can do. So so we try and push the boundaries on things that not aren't necessarily typically bank bank sort of known um, activities. So it's like the networks. It's creating opportunities, access to markets. We've got a great marketplace on our app, app as well, where where businesses can interact and buy from each other, um, and and that education piece too. So it's it's a whole continuum, a whole holistic view of supporting a business and specifically a female business no that's great and and yeah good on you guys for doing that and we'll keep asking the questions right yeah yeah exactly i'll still keep asking the questions as well i'm fighting the good fight oh good good (laughs) what industries do you see um most entrepreneur women entrepreneurs enter and why do you think that is but, you know, the, it's, yeah, I mean, it, typically the services industry is, is quite high for us. If we look at, look at our data and, and if I look at some, most of our clients, our client base, the services are sort of the beauty industry, professional services, lawyers, conveyances, attorneys, and that sort of thing, because they, they can be also sole props and then they can sort of start to grow their business, right? So, so that is typically those professionals that go into business for themselves as well. And then, like I said, the, the services industry. And then with COVID um, as well, and everything being digitized and going online, a lot of um, online businesses have have started popping up. So people are buying a lot more retail sort of things online. Women are opening up their retail stores online. So that's quite exciting to see. And the the growth and the, 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 the access to new international markets coming from that is really exciting as well. So, but but saying that we do have, you know, it's, it's really interesting to see we have a lot of women fuel retailers and um, because there are a lot of programs out there that help um, help get women into that space as well. So to, to typically try and change a male dominated environment. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the sectors that we, we're seeing a, a big plan at the moment. Very interesting. 
Um, and also it makes sense. I can understand that. Um, and I think that, you know, we talk about the fact that COVID, I mean, we know that COVID's been devastating for many, um, but just a couple of this, you know, if there are any silver linings to COVID, it's, it's this digitization, which has opened new markets and particularly access for women to enter. Yeah. And then the shift yeah. that we've seen at Recruit My Mom um, around um, hybrid and remote working, which is allowing a lot more women to remain and enter the market and a lot more companies yeah. looking to employ women now um, because and, they're embracing it. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about that, and I think in your world as well, Philippa, is that you know women can also run their little side hustle as well on the side because they, they're working either part-time or they, you know, with the remote working as well, you can sort of try and manage everything not that we've we've got enough on our plates already to 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 have a side hustle but 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 it does allow for that flexibility and that online like you say being online gives you that ability to to manage things quite effectively and and create those new markets yeah absolutely so you recently visited rwanda and oh, yeah. <laughs> i was just absolutely fascinated by your trip and i wanted to share your insights with our you know the people that have joined us on this webinar today so what insights um, Nicole, can yeah. you draw from that trip on some of the things that the government's doing to empower women economically? Mm. Oh, yeah, Philip. I mean, that was a bucket list trip that I think has been on my list for the last 15 years. And, and thankfully, again, to COVID, it, it, it made it affordable to go. Um, but Rwanda is, you know, it, it, it just blew my mind. I, I don't think I actually anticipated what I was going to see there, to be honest. And look, I went for the gorillas, but I spent a bit of time in Kigali and um, we, had a, we had a fantastic tour guide who took us around. And, you know, look, genocide that happened there was just, it was it was absolutely devastating. But they've learned from, from the past and from, from the mistakes that were made. And, I mean, just, just what is going on there around the entrepreneurial space? The government is investing heavily in entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurs. They've got business hubs and centers sort of in the main the main areas where they offer the education support sort of and um, work workspaces for entrepreneurs as well. Um, the government partners a lot with DFIs, so financial institutions, as well as funders to help make sure that everybody has a job. So whether it is, you know, a farmer um, sort of giving him a cow and a little piece of land um, to, to the coffee industry, and I'll talk about that a bit now but but they really are embracing the entrepreneurial culture and teaching a man to fish um, and giving them the education and the skills to do that and it's really exciting to see because it's, it's a really well functioning economy it's clean it's beautiful people are jo have jobs they've all got homes um, but what what I found so fascinating and I absolutely loved is is that they've got quite a and, and look, I thought Rwanda was known for its coffee, but they're actually known for their tea culture, funny enough, and and coffee coffee secondary. But um, they've they've had funders that have come in that have helped to empower women to become coffee growers and and coffee sellers, and then and also then obviously go on to coffee shops and 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 that sort of thing. And they've they've taken about thirty thousand women and empowered them in the coffee industry and it's a large part of their exports now to bring in obviously more revenue into the country but but it came about because obviously because of genocide um a lot of a lot of the men and breadwinners in the family were were mur murdered and slaughtered and the women weren't working and then they had to take up these they had to take up opportunities and and do whatever they could to obviously keep families like surviving and thriving and and sort of food on the table but they really they really are um very intentional about about making sure that people also pay it forward so for example and i found this such an interesting story is if if somebody is given a cow and a piece of land and a bull to mate once it has a baby he needs to actually pay it forward which is which i love because it's part of our women in business strategy is making a difference and paying it forward but but then to his neighbor to give his neighbor a calf that he can then rear and you know, get milk from or, or do whatever he needs to do. So they really are embracing the sort of culture of entrepreneurship and making sure that everybody has a role to play in society. And, and the barter trade still exists there. So if I, for example, have one farm or they have one farmer growing mealies and, an, and another growing potatoes, they'll barter with each other so that they can share the food, which is, which is phenomenal. And I love that. Those are beautiful stories, and um, yeah, definitely stuff we. I, I think that we could take out, right? Yeah. Replicate in there. We, yeah, we could. We could. Nicole, if you could advise women 
entrepreneurs or wannabe entrepreneurs, um, mm. what advice would you give? Just start. <laughs> um, you know, don't be afraid to start. I think, you know, like, like I said, I think we, we like to, as women, we like to have everything, all our ducks in a row and 100% before we'll even take a chance. And, um, you know, you don't know unless you take that risk. So look, don't take unnecessary risks that are going to cost you your family's livelihood or, or anything like that. But if you've got a great idea, start that side hustle. You know, surround yourself as well with people who are knowledgeable. Find yourself a mentor learn as much as possible and um, there are so many organizations out there there are so many platforms where you can you can belong to that you can get information from you can get access to networks you can ask questions um, and and be part of a community that can help you to grow to help you you know with your business whether it's you know a contact or a or a, you know just some some advice on something and then make use of those opportunities so it's, it's very well like belonging to organizations but make use of it you know make Make use of those connections you make. Phone up that, that person that you've met and that they've offered to help you. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Um, and never stop, you know, like I said, never stop learning and, and asking those questions because that's how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we, we morph and we are. Yeah, um, and I think how these business ideas as well sort of grow and become big, bigger entities and not just ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's great. And I, I, I really like the way you keep referring to networks because they're powerful and mm. when one connects with other women business owners or you know you're in a network you know that those connections can really open doors for you yeah. um so i think women are great together and when they collaborate we're powerful uh, i'll give you a prime example and as you know sort of with events and, and that sort of thing not everything always goes according to plan and there's a lot that goes on in the background and um on on friday we had uh, a networking event and and everything if anything and everything could go wrong it would but and it did but um there were five of us running around and it, including our clients getting involved in doing stuff and making things happen and it was just amazing like we had, we had good laughs and good like good fun doing it. and we just all came together which was so incredible and the woman actually had a wonderful time you know it was just it was just shows you the power of of how women collaborating and networking and working together actually can you know can solve the world's problems i think uh, but also also exciting to see just afterwards i mean two of the women even started doing business together that day and have now you know decided to I and mean, they've already got a couple of meetings set up this week but it just shows you the power of of women and and when we come together what we can do i think we can change the world <laughs> I agree with you. I absolutely <laughs> 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> um, Nicole, if you had to advise governments or investors, <laughs> if you could, okay, theoretically, yeah. Um, yeah. about investing in Africa, yeah. um, you know, what would you say to them? Yeah, I think, you know what, Philip, I mean, we know this and we often have this, this chat, is that, South Africa is so full of opportunity. There is, there is so much here. We've got a rich culture. We've got a diverse culture. We've got people that, incredible people, incredible minds. Um, so there's so much opportunity. So just don't, don't be scared to investors. Don't be scared. I know, you know, the world sees this, this picture that's painted on the outside. But, you know, if you come here and you spend time here, you see what the opportunity is. You see you, you, know, you just see what great things are happening in this country. Um, you know, so, so from an investment side, side, I mean, that's what I would say is just actually come here. I mean, we do have a lot of DFIs that are interested in Africa that are investing and they're seeing the fruits of their labor. They are, they are seeing, I mean, we got a funding line from the IFC, which is the International Finance Corporation, to deploy into women-led businesses. And, and that whole funding line was deployed within eight months. So that just shows you how, how powerful that sort of sort of funding can be and the, and the jobs that can be created. Um, on government side, it's just, you know what, it's this, the age old thing of just, we need to make business easier. We need to make it easier for entrepreneurs um, to start businesses, you know, like just, just enable them more. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's to take away that, that red tape, but rather, you know, be there as a supporter and an, an enabler, like I said, as opposed to sort of having so much legislation and red tape that it actually makes people not want to even think about starting businesses because it's just too difficult. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, I think it's, it's really evident that, you know, there is more work to be done in South Africa, you know, to improve the gender parity. 
um, you know, both in the workplace and more broadly um, through equitable access to, to opportunities. And um, yeah, we need the support of government and, and investors to be able to do that. Oh, I agree with you. Um, I think that's really good advice. I would I would give governments the exact same advice, which is cut the red tape, really. Yeah. Just make it so much easier yeah. for people to access markets and create businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Nicole, um, another question is um, do you think that um, you know, could you like what are the benefits of economically empowering women to start businesses in South Africa and Africa? Oh, well, Philippa, I mean, look, we're the primary decision makers, aren't we, right? <laughs> so, so if you think about it, I mean, if you think about it, women, women, we're the ones who decide what's going to be typically, and I am generalizing, but we're the ones who decide what's going to be had for dinner that's in the evening, what cleaning materials we use, you know, what's, you know, what education our children are going to get, um, you know, that sort of thing. So, so not only in business, but in personal lives, women are primary decision makers. So we're a big target sort of market and audience. And you know, and if we empower more women, more women want to pay it forward. They want to create jobs. They want to they want to make a social change and a social impact. And I and I am generalizing when I specifically refer to women, but it's because we are more of the care, carers and nurturers in society that we we want to make more of an impact um, in society as well. So to create jobs, in, increase employment. Um, so it's it's a no no brainer. I mean, there's a there's a, a thirty seven trillion dollar economy out there that women can you know, can open up and, and it's, it's just about, you know, doing the right things and enabling women to, to get onto that ladder to be able to do that. Absolutely. And I think that that's, you know, where we want to celebrate this Women's Month, the work that you're doing and FNB are doing with your Women in Business program is to have recognized the value that women bring to not only business but to society at large and then putting in enablers you know to and, and I, I would you know that's my call to all business and government out yeah. there is, is create more enablers for women to get into business and to stay in business and yeah, yeah. agreed Really. Yeah, and I think um, you know, as a corporate, um, um, Nicole is is also just you know for corporates to be looking out for women-owned businesses. Yeah, they can also yeah. you know um, support and and enable. I think that that's really important. So, if we've got both um, business owners watching us today, and we've got budding entrepreneurs or even entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, with us today. Any final thoughts you would like to leave with any of those groups? Yeah, I and mean, I think I mean, I've sort of covered, covered most of it, but we, we do have such a rich and diverse country with so many opportunities. And, you know, it really is talking about the collaboration is, I mean, I always like to say, I like to play nicely in the sandpit. So we all need to come together to enable and to, to grow the entrepreneurial culture and support each other. And it's not a competition. It's, it's about enabling. It's about it's actually about growing our economy and making making South Africa a better a better South Africa. Um, so it is about that coming together and and like I said, creating that enabling environment and and all working together um, to to ensure that we can do that and, and help support entrepreneurs. And then to the entrepreneurs, like I said, you know, make it well, take or well, not make, but take advantage of of every opportunity that comes your way, whether it's mentorship or advice or or learning opportunities. Um, or, or being part of a network, just just take it and, and use it and grab it and, and run with it. Absolutely. No, that's great. Well, Nicole Sykes, Head of Women in Business at FNB Business, we are so grateful for your time today and that you've shared your wisdom, but also your passion with us. Um, and Nicole, I just want to thank you very much for your time and for sharing you know, your thoughts with us. We really do appreciate it. And um, we wish you all the best. And we hope that you impact many, many, many more women-owned businesses. Oh, th oh, thank you, Philip. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share it because I am passionate about it. And it's just, you know, it's, it's all about getting, getting the word out there, right? And um, so, so, yeah, thank you for allowing me this, this opportunity. And hopefully we can get some, some more women through, um, through our doors and educated and, and impacting society. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, for those of us, that, those of you that joined us today, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching this webinar. I really hope that it's inspired you, that you're encouraged to either go and start a business or enable a woman-owned business, because um, in Africa, we really do need a lot more women economically empowered. So thank you.